Today on Five Man, we learn identity theft was a dank breeze before the invention of smartphones, readily available internet, and back when people were more gullible than mountain children. My name's James. I'm Nicole. And this. No, no, God, no, no, it's God dang it, guys. We're not doing another uh, subversion of a normal episode like we've done the past two times with Sean. We're just going Aww. to do a normal, down the middle, still subversions of normal podcast type okay. podcast. And I, I may come from mountain folk, but that doesn't make me a mountain child. Yeah, you come from mountain folk, all right. You come hard from okay. mountain folk, you All right, term. well, my grandfather was a mountain <laughs> man, but I'm twice removed, okay? I haven't All seen right. a mountain since. Also, that's not a stereotype that mountain people are gullible. But speaking of stereotypes, JVC, my name is James. I'm Nicole. And this is Mostly, Mostly Speaking Sentai. Sentai. Oh, yes, guys. Like I did say, my name is James, and on a morning walk this week, this is before Halloween, I saw a child, maybe three to five years old. I don't know how big a child should be at what age, because I am voluntarily infertile. So I, I was just walking, and out of the corner of my eye, I see a child. I'm like, oh, what's up with them? And they were... They were pulling a par, guys. They were staring at a wall like the Blair Witch mm. told them to. And it was terrifying, but also funny at the same time. I thought he was peeing, possibly. Like, why is this child? Because he was standing, like, hands towards, I don't know. Like, if, if your boy was hands peeing. in front. Yes. And, um... Party in the back. <laughs> he wasn't peeing. I didn't see a stream anywhere. Every mullet is a piss. Every mullet is a piss. Okay, all right. You got your hands in front and you're about to party in the back. Oh, hands in front, I guess, unless you're one of those creepy things from Silent Hill that have arms facing the backwards. I, there's probably some bullshit like that, and I've never played a game. <laughs> You just, just you just start describing a monster you assume to exist. Of course, I've been on All a right. Wikipedia though. But oh shit! Speaking of Wikipedias, this fucker needs one because she is so beautiful that my eyes need a dictionary to explain why it's the bricks, the Jacus, Nicole. Am I just gonna get an introduction like every ten minutes? I don't know. All right, cool. Why would you need another? <laughs> no, this is the normal amount of introductions. And I'm James. Exactly. And this Thank is you. Sweaty Time Sentai Palooza Speaking Festival. Oh, what, Sean, you, you got a, I think, Festival. ring it in. I don't like a post-poop Seanathan. <laughs> That's true. I got weird energy. Hey, guys, it is from the podcast formerly known as Shuffling the Deck, the introductory ICP playlist podcast, but now a wrestling podcast where focusing on Lucha Underground and then, hey, you start at the top and then you leave on the top because we're probably not going to do a TNA even though he wants so TNA, badly. TNA, TNA, TNA. It's a shark boy. James, he's a boy, but he's also a shark, and then he thinks he's Stone Cold Steve Austin. It's the best thing to ever happen in media. If you want to see an actual man who is a shark, but also a boy, avenging the death of their father... How about you watch the Evolved Part 1 on Troma now, right now, <laughs> after watching Foul Uprising Comatose's movie? Hell yeah. It's Sean Marciniak. Whoa, 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 my brother. Whoa, 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 whoa my, my sister. sister. Whoa, 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 bear dog. Whoa, 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 Do I whoa, whoa, need down to dog. be here? <laughs> <laughs> Pope, I'm sorry, man. Pope poop energy, Sean, is like fucking uncontainable, but forcing you to feel them. Word life, basic poopanomics. Did you say Pope poop? Yep. Post. You no, dangerous. I said no. <laughs> no, no, I said I said Pope poop. I pooped okay. out uh, the white smoke. 
oh, which yeah. is how you know I am the chosen one, and I will lead the war against L and his evil Death Note. Wait, that was light. Damn it. That was also El Barto, dude. Ay, caramba. Sean, there's butt chugging. Would you ever, Mm -hmm. like, vape out of your ass? I vaped out of my nose one time, and that was a bad idea. Okay. So, yes. All right. You guys (laughs) heard it here first. Twitch.tv forward slash GooseVK. He will be. You'll see the vape, and it's going to go towards his mouth, but no, no, no. It's going down south. Whoa, 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 my butthole. Would whoa, you? Whoa, 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 vaping through my butt. Uh, Sean, you have to stop singing that <laughs> song. Like, it's. Why? I do it so good. Yes, but it's. We're going to get <laughs> copyrighted Are we really? because of oh, how no. good it is. Oh, my gosh. Okay, I'll calm down. All right. <laughs> okay. Sean, would you ever sound your vape? Oh, okay. I'm glad I'm not allowed to sing, but I get to answer <laughs> these wonderful questions. <laughs> oh, this is worth it. Would you, though? I would listen to the sounds of my vaporizer. Sure. I, that's, that's industrial music, baby. Strong on nine inch nails. Our uh, mutual friend, meaning our, Nicole and I's, Ian Bracken, was talking about trying to get his son into the insane clown posse. Uh, his son Why? is not the baby, the other son. So we don't have to love him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's also not the mama. Oh, shit. What an existential crisis for his identity. So trying to get them into that, but oh, we'll get into other metal music. And this was in a Facebook group messenger style. And I come in and I was like, yeah, my mission now on the height of horror is to try to influence Presley, wife and mother of this child, to... A wife of Ian, mother of the child, because okay. I knew Sean was going to be like, oh, do, do, there's a, do, the incest happening? No. Ew. What? No, that's something you would say, James. Yeah. No, that's something. You've done two podcasts with me. I d- that is not my brand, and I do not want it getting out that that is my brand. Oh, it's your brand, baby. It is not my Russell brand. That is all you. That is JVC to a JVT. All right. So I said my my goal is to just influence Presley to influence your son to listen to Bright Eyes and other Saddle Creek music. And then he was really pissed about that. He was like, please don't do that. That would be bad for me. (laughs) I was going to say if you I was worried your mission was going to be to influence the child into becoming another juggalo no because the last time you did that was to me yeah and it worked and it ended with me being a juggalo so i could talk with my friend james who was also oh wait no he's just pissed at everything now yeah man icp blows you left me in a juggalo boat of my own i will say for a very long time they were hitting with joker cards like from ringmaster as but from two to 2.2, 2.2, very good. Yeah, and I really, and th- there were some definite hot spots in the second Joker deck. Yeah. I really enjoyed a lot of that. The so first what two. the fuck you happened? You want to know what JVC stands for? What? N- yes, I don't know. <laughs> Jesus Von Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, well played. Well played, Nicole. <laughs> Sean, you're really into wrestling. (laughs) I do like wrestling. So recently, Uh. Ric Flair, the nature boy, had his retirement match. I watched it. And here, we've done this before, is how would James book this? How would James book Ric Flair's retirement match? Yeah, who was he up against originally? So it was a tag team match, him and his son-in-law, Andrade, versus Jay Lethal and J E double F J A double R E double T, the hot dog and showboating himself, Jeff Re Jarrett, who you will know more about once we begin our TNA podcast. Gross. TNA, TNA. TNA. See, this is how I would have done it. I would have done one on one Ric Flair, the nature boy, retiring, or he keeps going if he wins, versus 2017's. Sexy star. Oh, wait. 
Was that the year she broke Rosemary's arm? Yeah, what I'm saying is I hope she kills him in the <laughs> ring. Oh, okay. I was, you know what? I was worried about this. But yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah. Dude, and you hear like immediately afterwards, he's like, you know what? Maybe not so much my retirement match. He passed out twice during the match. While the cameras were on, the bell had rung. Everybody was watching. He passed out to unconsciousness twice. That's a sign. He was probably trying to say, woo, but man, that was way too much oxygen leaving his body. He wooed the air out of his lungs and he's like, you know what? I, would, I think he took a couple dates in Puerto Rico. I could be wrong. Okay, so it's his United States of America retirement. You know what? I'm going to I'm going to go to AAW next month. I bet he's going to be there. I'll be like, why? Get out of here, Rick. Maybe it's he should change it to like Kiss doing it. The retirement tour. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> and not in the, just for health and safety concerns, man. If you pass out twice doing anything, you should reconsider how you do that thing. You know? Well, that's why I'm saying you should go on this tour. James, Nicole, I have a question for you two that, that I will ask now. What is something that you love to do, but you passed out twice during that you would have to like re-examine and be like, you know what? I think I should stop. Like you just straight like blackout unconscious doing twice, like twice. Heavy drinking. Okay. You, do you drink? <laughs> no, I don't. I've never oh, been okay. drunk. Hold on. <laughs> Nicole, what, what's yours? Fuck. I'm too tired to think of anything funny. Okay, like, Nicole, like, if you were, what if you were drawing, like, sexy genders? Pet too many cats. <laughs> yeah, like, all of a sudden your eyes start getting puffy while yeah, you're petting cats, allergies. and then you just pass out. Yeah. All of a sudden, socks just, like, top rope elbow drops you. Uh -huh. you're like, we don't even have robes in this apartment. <laughs> yeah. I have to say, get down from the microphone cables right now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And Sox shakes his head, gives you the suck it and degeneration no. exile. If he did that, I would be so proud. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think Sox is more degeneration X or NWO? Uh, degeneration X. Hell yeah. Break it down. He's like BWO. The Blue World Order from, yeah. w from ECW? Uh-huh. Okay, okay. Because how he walks is 15 frames per second. What about <laughs> ZWO? What's that? Whoa. The zoo world order. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Explain, because he lives in a zoo? Because uh, it rhymes with okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. blue and new. I'm from the goo world order because I'm just <laughs> shooting it nonstop. Oh, my God. Oh, my. And I emphasize, God. Sean, you're from the yeah. Lou world order because you shit all the time, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and when I do, I'm very British about it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, you can't hear it right now because I'm not pooping. But if you ever mm -hmm. catch me on the toilet, oh, it's teen crumpets all day, baby. Yeah! It's ridiculous. Sean, if I passed out twice during lovemaking, uh, I'm kidding. I would still keep doing it. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> I would say like, hey, you can keep going. This is fine. <laughs> so I, I I, would probably just have to lay down. Lay down, dog. Bad brother, sis. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I, fuck. I was trying to bring it back to the whoa, whoa, whoa thing I'm not allowed to do anymore. But really, it would, like, if I was passing out during rap songs, but I, I think mm -hmm. I would just pivot to writing them for people. Yeah, okay. Like, that's the, th which makes sense. Like, if you can find, I would, I would think about that, like, I don't know. Throat cancer is real scary, especially back when I would like do stand up. That was like this weird, like lingering fear of like, what happened if I couldn't perform stand up anymore? And I was like, I guess I would write. I would pivot and hope that that brings me as much fulfillment. But there's no way to really know until something like that happens. Dude, you get a development deal at NBC and you create goddamn home improvement. Uh, wait, hold on, James. I'll have you know Home Improvement is an ABC property, and the fact that you don't know that just disgusts me. I actually How should know that because you. I've I've been looking at where to stream Home Improvement, and then they <laughs> upload, it's on Hulu again, and I was like, yeah! I'm surprised it's actually not on Disney+. Plus. No. Because it's an ABC property. 
Yeah, but children don't like home improvement. That's for daddy. What are you talking about? JTT was a national treasure. Remains a national treasure. That's yeah. a good. That's a great kid. To dads. Get out of here. The children, they loved. Dads would say, I want him as my boy. <laughs> JTT is the perfect son. Just, uh, j- not Justin, uh, Shonathan Taylor Tomlin. Justin Timberlake Top, 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 Topple. Ooh, Lord. Justin Timberlake Topless. I'm going to type that into Google right now. <laughs> Wowie zowie. I didn't think anything would show up. All right. So I did type into Google Zoo World Order <laughs> and I <laughs> have found a SoundCloud page uh, linking. <laughs> Uh, looks like the ba- the group's name is Zoo World Order out of Mexico City, Mexico. Hell yeah. Why? Because they're great. I don't know. I'm what a, kind I'm of genre are they? I cannot tell. Okay. Like you can't tell or like, oh, I'll never tell. Uh, shush, shush, shush. No, I'm looking for like an about section and I don't see one. I bet it's like, what the Zoo World Order? Give me hors d'oeuvres. I'm sure that's verbatim. How did you know? Like going by, oh, oh, I'm going to guess New World Hip Hop going by the album art, but that's a big old guess. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's stereotyping album art. I heard it's monotyping because they couldn't afford two microphones. Oh, that's fuck, not how dude. you record stereo. Wait, yeah, it is. Is it? Oh, shit. I did it. Yeah, you can <laughs> record stereo with two microphones. I didn't even know I was doing it, and I did it. I'm fucking. I'm the best. You know what? Everyone, everyone out. This is my new. This is my new podcast. Everyone go. Okay. Call me. Okay. Nicole, get the get the fuck out of here too. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. All right. Cool. All right. Ready? Here it comes. What's going on, motherfuckers? It's Sean Marciniak, and you're listening to mostly listening to Insane Clown Posse. Fucking, and we're going to talk about my favorite song, My Ex is My Homie. And it's real good, and you should all fucking jerk off to it and then die forever. And then come back to life and listen to it again. Uh, And come uh, into oblivion, because when you die, you never stop coming. Sean, you're referencing (laughs) a lot of things like... If they die, they could keep living to it. And he says, uh, and into oblivion from uh, one of, uh, Welcome to the Show, I think, is the song off from Shangri-La. Oh, probably. And into oblivion. I have blocked out so much of that podcast. Go back and listen, baby. It's fun. I should. I had a good time. I did when I wasn't having a good time. Yeah. (laughs) What? I did until I wasn't having a good time. That's what I meant to say. Yeah, but I was always a hoot. Yeah. You always had fun with you always had fun with me. Yes, but not with ICP. Those no, last two pushing. albums, oh god, they Ooh. sucked. What are you talking about, man? That Fred was the rat, but he was also a metaphor. Okay, it was Flip the Rat. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm talking about Fred. Yeah, Red Dead Fred Fury. No, I'm talking about different Fred. Oh my god. <laughs> Drop Dead Fred. <laughs> yep. Okay, all right. Fred Willard. Fred Word. Uh, Freddie Benson from iCarly. <laughs> I'm talking about I would like some sausage I am daddy And Freddy has fingers Yep 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 Fred Claus You know that movie Fred has fingers No Would it be different If Fred had toes I guess Sean Yeah We gotta I guess Get into five man <laughs> I guess I guess Yeah Today we're discussing Episode 38 of five man Entitled Fake sibling shit Which starts out With Nicole saying Wait, Ken looks different, or does he just have a new haircut? What's up with this? And then I said... Well, because I was like, that's not the same person. And James didn't say anything. So I was like, oh, well, I don't know. Is it just because he has a different haircut then? And then it says, fake sibling teachers. And then Nicole says, looks at me and goes, you tricked me. And I was like, no, a (laughs) show for children did. You little freaky. And Nicole, how did that make you feel? That his show for children had successfully tricked you. It didn't successfully trick me, okay? Dude, it tricked you. Now it has to kiss you. I said, that's not the same person. And then James didn't answer me. Sans answer is what I like to say. It's Sans, sir. Sanderson sisters. One thing I was going to say is something I forgot. 
this is a good podcast. Okay. Yeah, wait, guys, I don't know what? if this is manageable. This is... is this salvageable? You forgot to watch Hocus Pocus the Squeakle? I didn't watch it yet, guys. I'm scared. But you need to learn about cats and virgins, and I haven't seen it either. If you, one takeaway from today's episode is... One. That Nicole got tricked by a children's episode. Oh, th- that's number one. Number two, Yo, though, boom is boom roasted. Boom roasted. Hocus Pocus oh. two. We gotta find someone with a Disney Plus password. It see they're like, oh, we have a hundred million users. Not fucking one around here, okay? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I got one, but it's my mom's, so I'm very iffy about giving it out because uh, I worry about my mom's safety. Unlike your Deedle boy, you give it out to anyone. Yeah, I give that deedle out to everybody. My deedle's the Elton John of the deedle world. You can tell everybody that this is your deedle. Speaking of which, I really want to tweet this out and say, hey, if anyone sees Sean Marciniak at a bar and wishes to go up to them to, like, hit on him, here's the icebreaker. Just do this, and it will be a gif of Norman Smiley wiggling. You know what? I was really worried about where you're going with that, but true. Yeah. And accurate. And listen, you want to... Oh, you... <laughs> what if the first time you came over to do Mostly Love and Lucha, I started out just by doing the, like, wiggle, 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 wiggle. I, we, we would still be doing Mostly Love and Lucha. Okay. I would be on for every day. You wouldn't even invite me. I would just show up and be like, we already have a guest. And I'll be like, it's okay. I brought my own microphone. Hell yeah. We're doing this. I heard Norman Smiley might be involved. You're like, I brought two microphones in case you want me in stereo. Yeah. Nicole, now that you know who Norman Smiley is, thanks to Straight to Patreon, how do you feel about Norman Smiley? Is he the best or the best? I don't best? know who the fuck Norman Smiley what is. The f- we watched him wrestle for a whole of three seconds in that Vampiro oh movie. Oh my God. Yeah, we saw his butt. His back was to the camera for most of his screen time. Good. But it was, it was a great butt. Yeah, that's why I said good. I know, because you would never say a disparaging word about Norman Smiley, of course. Yeah, he's no Ric Flair. Who? <laughs> In the best way possible, Ric Flair might, is a monster. Yay. He's also a suck-ass wrestler. So, today, well, five man. He's a good wrestler. He's just a terrible person. We see these weird looking sibling teachers up in the mountains. We're like, what the hell's going what the hell going on here? And then because they're mountain people. I'm really upset that I took a uh, stance defending Ric Flair just there. Yeah. Because yeah. you're you also do that with stand ups, you pervert. So <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? You're like, well, you know, Seinfeld did some pretty good stand-up, guys. I have never said you that. Were, no, there was one episode of one of our shows, I forget if it was Shuffling or what Sweaty Time. What are we talking about? That I was like, Sean, you have now defended like three now canceled, but you were like, back in the day, they were influential. Okay, well, none of those people are stand-ups. They're truth-tellers, first of all. <laughs> okay. This is the thing and about stand up Comedy's all about opening up the mind of the haunted house Fuck. we call reality. God damn all it. Right? Whitney Cummings style, baby. <laughs> That's what I was going to reference as well. Yeah, stand-up yes. comedy is just... You know, the honesty that people are too afraid to say in their regular lives. Absolutely. If you go up on stage for stand-up comedy, if you don't get laughs, that's fine as long as the audience takes something away of your thought-provoking truth telling oh yeah honestly you shouldn't be getting laughs because if you're getting laughs it means everyone's agreeing with you and if everyone's agreeing with you uh what are you actually saying huh you need some winces and let's read her emails how about that Uh uh-huh can we be real for a second (laughs) her emails are more important than anything any email. Anything ever. Yeah, any email. Bill I don't give a Ingvall shit. talking about <laughs> not knowing when his wife is taking a shit because you sit down when you pee and <laughs> shit. That's the fucking gospel right there. <laughs> <laughs> True. We, we have to know. 
why would you ever cancel Toast, you know? Ser Bill Ingvall is the only reason I wake up in the morning. I want his skin on my <laughs> own. Yeah, he's he has tight, taut skin. Why wouldn't you want that on you? And he's a truth teller. Uh -huh. he, doesn't under he doesn't understand women, and he never will. I don't Thank know why. You, okay, guys, <laughs> just so everyone knows, I don't. I have been not kept up with Bill Ingvall politically or anything of recent note. I think he's a very good stand-up. No, I don't know. It's just like a bit from stand-up I saw like 10 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> if Bill Ingvall asked me to join the Proud Boys... <laughs> I wouldn't need a sign. Free your mind and think for yourself. There's your sign. Boom. This also, sign was right in front of you. I'll, I might bleep this out, but <laughs> you want reading Hillary's emails are more important. Anything, however minute, are more important than emails or MySpace messages Crystalia ever sent. Oh God. <laughs> Crystalia, end of sentence. I fuck it. That was I, we talked. We were talking about him on sweaty times, and I didn't. I didn't have the chutzpah to na to like bring up his name anymore because I was just so tired of hearing it. Yeah, Sean. That's insane. For a wrestling podcast, Sean says I fucking hate comedy more than. I fucking hate comedy, dude. More than it you sucks. say, like Norman Smiley's the greatest. Because he's not on Lucha Underground because he's too busy in the performance center of the W and the W and the E. <gasps> so, guys. Dub, dubby, dub, Sean dubby. says, uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is bad when I keep trying to get things on track. <laughs> you're not allowed to make stand-up comedy jokes on my holy Chicago city. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sean doesn't know that <laughs> reference. But the listeners do. They I know. have been gatekeeping Chicago comedy from the shadows since I was before born. It was me as a little sperm running around being like, you can't book that guy. He doesn't even have a tight five. Get him out of here. Where's your crowd work, bro? You're like, no, I will not see. Why can't I think of his name? Bill... Yes. Angval. Dang it, no. Uh, Bill and David. You know those two Excellent guys? Excellent adventure? No, the Bill and David from Mr. Oh. Show. No. Oh, wait. Bob Oden? Bob? Bob, Bob and Odenkirk? David. That's why yeah, I couldn't. Okay. I had Bill Ingvall on the you brain. Were, you were just screaming Bill and David and like <laughs> desperately looking for someone to be like, understand these names. Bill and David. You know Netflix, Mr. Show? <laughs> It's, it's what I imagine the uh, film adaptation of I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream is like. Only instead of I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream, it's I Have a Mouth, but I Can Only Scream Bob and David. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Or not even Bob, Bill and David. You know, um, Bill and Tom, you know them. <laughs> They're on the radio. They break a lot of comedians. Midwest. Bill? Ingval. Okay. And Tom Kenny Ingval. Okay. Thomas William Ingval. Full name. Here's your sign. Oh my god. If I had a sign that said stop in the name of all libtard cucks, of course I would represent it. <laughs> Jesus. Comedy is a haunted house of the mind. Okay, so and if you're laughing, you're not doing it right. Five man today. <laughs> there's doppelgangers and Fumia. He's on the case in the mountains. He's like ding -ding, dirt biking up there. And then he comes wise to it and comes hard on it. Five man. Coming mountain style. I come like a mountain. I get so, those peaks dusted white. <laughs> So, <laughs> Sean, if you're going to interrupt, at least wait one second to interrupt so I don't have to, like, mute people over talking each other. Uh, okay, I'm going to interrupt uh, right now. Ready? Yes. Come mountain style. All right, I'm good. All right. So we see our villains, you know, uh, Garoa, Zaza, etc., 
all of them are dressed as the five sibling teachers and Chevaleria needs his garb because without it, he looks like a dingus little boy. His haircut is so bad. Mm-hmm. Wait, which one is Chevaleria? That's Chevalier? Yeah. Okay. No, it's Zaza. I was confused because there were some no. syllables. <laughs> <laughs> I was confused. There were some syllables I did not recognize. I was really sad in this episode. I think that's why that's why, that's why I refuse to allow you to talk about it. That opening, the pre-titles uh, scene where the sib- the fake sibling teachers that we don't know are fake yet are just like taking care of these poor mountain children who like nobody want no teachers want to stick around. I don't think any of them have parents. And it's just it's like the one uh, fake Ken, uh, who is Chevalier, like kind of uses his magic to help young Yuda over a pommel horse. Mm-hmm. And he says, it's, this is the first time anyone's ever believed in me. I have confidence now. Thank you. Like I was I was not prepared. I was I was immediately just like, oh, this sucks because I know he's going to betray him because of like how, you know, scripts and like storytelling is mm-hmm. like it was mm-hmm. very clearly like this. Nothing good will happen for these children. And it was hard. It was so sad. But because of this, that meant they actually met the five sibling teachers and the five man. Which is which is good. And we'll get we'll get we'll we'll get there. It's weird watching watching it as an older person who like is familiar with kind of story and like how things most like how tropes will most likely play out. (laughs) Like that scene specifically of like. Yuda being like, I can't, I have confidence now. No one's ever believed in me. And just being like, you're fucked. This is so sad. The one person <laughs> you've been able to like trust is going to betray you immediately and harshly. This, oh, it filled, it filled me with dread. Good dread. Cause it made me feel something, but dread. That reminds me of last night. We watched pumpkin head for the first time. Have you seen it? Uh, No. Okay, well, I'm going to spoil some of it. It's the okay. real early beginning. If you read the description like I did not, you'd be like, oh, yeah, uh, it's spoiled in the description. They, It's a father and a son, single father and a son. They live out in, like, the mountains area, like Appalachia probably. <laughs> Oh, so they come in mountain style. Yes. Hell yeah. And that kid is gullible as hell. So. Oh, because he's too busy coming mountain style. He's no. got no, He's got no fluids left in him to use for brain thinking because he's used all that energy to come mountain style, baby. Dust those peaks with my white. Okay. Well, it's because we had Chism. previously established mountain children are gullible. You said those words. So. <laughs> Because they're too busy coming mountain style. These two, at least laugh in the mic, Nicole. We need something. Uh, (laughs) Stop telling me what to do. It's one of the most beautiful father-son relationships. This dad truly, honestly cares for his son, is telling him stories, is being a goofball with him. I was like, holy shit, for a slasher movie, this feels so wholesome wholesome and genuine. I love it. And then I'm like, oh, because they're going to kill the kid. Yeah. You oh. you need to like feel for the father. And if he's being a typical dad from the 80s, you're going to be like, well, this dude's kind of a dick, which is weird how we or why we root for Clark Griswold. In uh, the vacation movies, that dude is a piece of shit and why he didn't die at the end. He should have gotten on a roller coaster at movies or whatever it was. And just it's roller coaster tycoon. And he just zooms right off and he crashes birds. And then like Christmas vacation is like set eight years later. And they're like finally over their dad's death because they've realized, wow, that man was a monster who was constantly cheating or trying his damnedest to cheat on our mom uh, baffling that for four movies this is our hero i thought it was like i thought you were pitching for him to just die at the end of every single one of them <laughs> that could be it too <laughs> like we never address like in a south park way we never address that he died the previous yeah. episode and it's all it's not in the movie they're just actually trying to kill chevy chase 
but there's so much evil inside of that man he refuses to stay dead so they have to keep they have to keep casting him in new movies yeah mm-hmm. but they're still like fuck we gotta this man's evil he keeps getting pumpkin headed who is doing this <laughs> he's <laughs> hollywood producers probably these Hollywood producers can't stop coming mountain style for fucking Chevy Chase. Now, when I was writing my notes, I uh, shortened Chevalier's name to Chevy or Chevy. Now, is that a coincidence or is Chevy Chase working for uh, Medusan? I, I don't know. know the answer. Neither do I. Nicole? Yes. I thought so. So we see our monster. It's this beautifully designed like thing in a shell. And it's got a hand that like chomp chomps, but we. I think they're called shellfish. Okay. Well, his name is uh, like abomination, abomination, like abomination, something like that. But a moniton. Uh, well, no, it's. I thought it was I O N. Oh, was I thought it was T O N? Maybe I don't know. I can't Nicole? read. Amonshin is what oh, I have. Okay. All okay. right. Three difference to rule the world. <laughs> so. Like the four leaders of hell and Butters the fourth. Me ouch. This thing used to go into oceans of different planets and pollute the oceans and just devastate worlds and kill everything living on there. So it was a pretty good thing. But it went in a UFO and fell to Earth long forgotten. And that's what they're digging up beneath this school but they wanted to do it covertly could they have just been like hey we're with uh, the gas company the school needs to be shut down yeah they absolutely could have done that but they're like we're little scams and this is what we'll do but well the problem with that hold on no they could not have somebody at some point would, would be like hey these kids aren't going to school why not oh some people from the gas company said they couldn't go none of us from the gas company you have to like tr- you have to trick okay. into something they want and like allowing normal operating per- this is brilliant chevalier did nothing wrong he is a genius and i think meadow deserves to give he needs a raise no and not with more that haircut. money well, okay, the haircut. That's why he needs a raise. New haircut. Okay, all He's right. doing a great job tricking children, much like Nicole was tricked by this children's show. Ooh, heating on you, Nicole. Mm-hmm. But this man, <laughs> this monster is described as a bioweapon, a biological weapon, just like my uncle's arms and feet. Wait, why? He's a black belt. Oh, So chaos. he's a biological weapon. Yeah. Also a bacterial weapon, because he's a stinky man, I bet. No, no, no. He wears me undies. Oh, okay. Never mind. Antimicrobial. Nicole is looking probably what this monster's definition is. I think she's looking up Zoo World Order and really digging their SoundCloud. Oh, my fucking God. It's like that fucking, when you think of like a fossil and it looks like a shell. Oh, okay. Oh, Ammonite. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I like great design. He got a he's got a face for a hand, and I think that's cool. It's like a gross squid living in there or something. A squid. Sean, we James. see when Fumia's coming down and he goes to that drinking fountain. They zoom to a spider eating a moth inside of a webbing. Oh, yeah. You as a film critique person, Mm -hmm. what does that mean? Well, now, as a film critique person, to me, uh, that represents coming mountain style. I wanted like a real thing, but you it's, <laughs> it's a, a weird, real thing. A, coming what? mountain style. <laughs> coming mountain style is actually like <laughs> it's so I, I actually it should be like you're jazzing on some breasts. And you're covering that's, those with snow-capped areolas. I, that's what I'm saying. Spreading my seed on those peaks, baby. Coming mountain style. I'm going to get so many people at bars coming up to me with uh, gifts of Norman Smiley after this appearance. No, they're literally going <laughs> to do Norman Smiley. Oh, okay. They're going to be doing living gifts of the wiggle. I'll be like, hell yeah. yeah, you heard me. You heard me talk about coming mountain style. And they'll be like, no, what is that? And I'll be like, please don't listen to this episode. Guys, it will ruin your image of me. Guys, that could be a horror movie, The Living Gif, 
or it could be, you know, how like, oh, he's the human traffic cone. I don't know. But like, hey, he's, yeah. he's the living gif. He can recreate any gif perfectly. I'm going to put this out there. If your nickname has human traffic anywhere in it, you should get a new nickname. <laughs> <laughs> no, get out of here. That's not a great nickname. <laughs> I realized that. When we were in Colorado, I would love to live in the mountains. I'm either a port pale or a mountain man. Okay. I got to live by the ocean or in a mountain. So you will move to Jackson Hole, Wyoming then. What's Jackson Hole, Wyoming? No, because Wyoming after, so that far out after talking to Presley on this show, I'm becoming more and more aware of food deserts and I don't want to live in any... I feel like Wyoming's probably getting close because that's near Montana. Food desert, baby. Is that how those work? Yeah, it's where a bunch of food can't be found. Yeah, but they do they they just spread like that, like a disease? Uh, yeah, and just like deserts. Capitalism kind of is a disease. Yeah. <laughs> so like I see that, especially with like the right wing sort of approach to tricking people into voting against their interests. Especially in like rural communities like that. Like it's not, there are smarter people to talk about that, but I am sure it is not uncommon to like wake up one morning and all of a sudden like reasonably priced grocery stores have been gouged out of your area for some like real expensive big time chains. You know, this is sad. Let's talk about, <laughs> let's talk about coming mountain style again. Let's talk about Bill Ingvall. Where's Bill Ingvall in this episode? Bill Ingvall, he's the principal of this. Oh, hell yeah, he is. He's the principal truth teller because that man is a fucking genius. <laughs> I wish I knew someone who knew Tim Meadows to just ask him, like, hey, how was Bill on the set of the Bill Ingvall show? Hey, don't be violent is something that Garo uh, says. And uh, he's he's going around trying to grab this bunny, very fatal attraction style. That that thing's gonna be roasted by a a pregnant lady in a little bit. But he looks exactly like all dads from the '90s. Sean, did your dad have a thick mustache like that back in the day? My dad. <laughs> it's funny because when. All right, like quick spoiler as it goes on and the uh, spoilers, uh, the fake sibling teachers do betray the children. And my one note is I miss my dad. I was <laughs> so sad through this all this episode. OK, so Sean, uh, I... but my dad did have. Yeah, my dad uh, was a beard guy. And I remember the one time he shaved the beard, but kept the mustache. And I saw his chin and I can never unsee his chin. It blew my mind. Oh, blew my mind. I thought you were going to say, hey, guys. Spoiler alert, my dad is dead. And because I mean, I, I kind of <laughs> did. I got there. I got there. Nicole, do you miss my dad? Uh, sure, why not? Thanks, bud. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> Anytime. Did your, well, you didn't know your stepfather in the 90s. Did your dad ever have a mustache? Me? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Probably still does. Ooh. I don't know. Nice, nice. James, if you could grow a mustache, would you be a father? Well, one, I would love to have a mustache, but I'm afraid of it. Hair getting in my food. Good fear. Good fear. And two, I don't care how thick of a mustache I grow. Like, my seed isn't there. Hell yeah. That was a trick question. You did not fall for it. Well done. I guess I could adopt. Okay. Foster. Would you rather adopt or foster? I don't know the difference in these words. Well, foster, you can, like, give them back. You can, like, oh, quit. Okay. And you get money to do it. Ah, oh, yeah. So, probably foster. Ah, oh, yeah. Now, if you did foster a child and they were attempting to jump over a pobble horse, would you use your magic fingers to snap and help them and give them false confidence? Okay. Or would you watch them fall and fail and learn to pick themselves back up? I'm glad you uh, said, would you use your magic fingers to snap? I'm glad you added that to snap I, in there. Listen, yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 no. I think, hmm, I, yeah, 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 probably let them fail a couple times. Or you want to know what? I would magically snap for them to like almost fail. So they're like, mm -hmm. oh man, I still don't have it. But hey, I did it. That means 
I can eventually do it again. That's kind of the best feeling. I always mm-hmm. like that. Or even when I almost succeed, but I end up, I fail right at the end. It's always just like, uh, so <laughs> it's, and it's hard. Cause that's also like, that's the wall of where you decide, Hey, I really like this thing and I want to do it yeah. or fuck this shit. I'm not having a good time. Yeah. I'm out. Yeah. Like when I pop shove it for the first time, I was like, hell yeah. Hell yeah. I guess it would be and pop shove it. No, no, no. I kept going. <laughs> I kept going until that time when I clipped a rock in my Uncle Pat's driveway. And then all of a sudden I was home hanging out with Cody Lighter. I was like, yeah, I don't remember the last like 12 minutes. I think I'm going to stop skateboarding. <laughs> Because I can't keep, like, yeah, it's cool to have these checkpoints, these save points in life that, Sean, I don't know if you know this, but when you get knocked unconscious and you're, like, still going around, that's a save point in your life that you can go back to. Okay. So I haven't had one probably since that time I got knocked out skateboarding. When's the last time you got knocked unconscious? I was skateboarding. Oh, for real? No. Okay. Okay. I don't know if I've ever been knocked unconscious, actually. Whoa. Dude, when you when you get deaded, you can't go back to any place. That's true. I'm fucked. Um, yeah, I think the clothes... I mean, I browned out. I've never actually... Because even, like, drinking. Because I did drink heavily. No. Uh, uh-uh. Drinking doesn't count. We've established this. Why does this drinking on, not count? Dr- it has to... Because then anyone is like, a wino can just go back whenever. Anyone can get knocked out, James. Yes, but it has to be like from a big old hit to the head. Now, if you're drinking and you like slip and fall and crack it on something or someone has a wine bottle and they're like, yo, dude, slam it on my head. It'll break. Don't worry. And then it does, but it doesn't. Then you get knocked unconscious. That's a save point. I don't care for these rules that establish a clear, uh, uh, straight edge agenda. Fuck this shit. Okay, well, this is what I'm saying. If you are okay. playing Final Fantasy VIII, you're in Balam Garden, and you're going around the the main directory area, and you get close to that save point, and you click triangle, guess what? You're close to the save point, but you're not actually at the save point. Okay. That's like drinking. And I, yeah, I, and I mean this like with all empathy and, and, and sincerity. What? Exactly. What the fuck are you talking about? I'm no, talking don't about exactly like I proved points, your point. Bitch. What? What, is your, what is this metaphor and how does it relate to my drinking problem? Because drinking isn't being knocked unconscious. It's your liver overworking and saying like, who boy, we got to take a break everywhere else and just focus all the energy here. Wait, but the, okay. Your soul is moving to your liver instead of your soul just going, hold up, wait a minute, put Put a a little little pimpin' in in it. it. Soul? When did this become VeggieTales? What? Why are we talking about souls? Souls, baby. Yeah, souls. (laughs) You got one, you need one. (laughs) Yeah. And you don't want one. (laughs) (laughs) Hold on, Nicole. Yeah, we don't want a soul. (laughs) You okay? What what do you mean you... I don't know. I feel like I haven't spoken in like four minutes. <laughs> so you just said my I fucking hate my soul. I don't want it. Nicole. Yeah. If Elizabeth Schur, or, or if Elizabeth Hurley showed up to my front door and said, "Hey, sign this contract," I'd sign it. Are you sure? Before she even explains what I get out of it, which is oh, bedazzled. Wishes. Yeah. Hell yeah. The DVD you have sitting on your counter that the last time I was over, I was confused, but I kept it to myself. Yeah. I was very confused. I didn't want to say anything. Sean had his was... sexual awakening. <laughs> <laughs> this was my first one. I can't believe it. I've been coming mountain style ever since. Dude, you and R2 Shelby 2 have something in common now. <laughs> <laughs> that, big, that we've been coming mountain style to Elizabeth Hurley since day one. I uh, know that that's you had, half this country. That you had your sexual awakening to this DVD. I feel like, what was Elizabeth Hurley in before that? Austin Powers. Probably Austin Powers. Like, I definitely did have a sexual awakening to Elizabeth Hurley. I don't think, I think, I don't think it was bedazzled yet. I don't think I had access to bedazzled. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, was a fembot Elizabeth Hurley or, I mean, she was always, I guess, a fembot, but do you, do you like her with her nipples being guns or her nipples being flesh? Now, <laughs> if I, if I had to choose, well, you know what? 
Okay, let me word it better. Do okay. you prefer I, her mountains being guns? There it is. Okay. Or her yeah. mountains being flesh? Now, if I'm coming mountain style. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> Well, no, because then it's you have mountains or you have volcanoes. <laughs> I mean, a volcano is just a mountain with a little bit of extra in it. You yeah, know? it explodes. That's what yeah, the guns that's, would that's be. That extra. Like that's that extra. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. But either way, I'm coming mountain style. So I'm going to put that out there. All right. So you uh, don't put you. You're fine either way. Oh, hell yeah. Dude, are you kidding me? I'm a, I am a part. I am a partner of Elizabeth Hurley. Yeah, I'm fine either way. Did you know Elizabeth Hurley is famous for, as the aforementioned skateboarding, the brand Hurley? I knew that was her, but I was always afraid to say it at parties. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why she can, she knows how to pop shove it. Yeah, she can pop shove it uh, all day. She's a very good skater, I'm sure. She can pop shove it into my prostate. I was okay. trying so hard to avoid it, but it had to be. This is true, yes. Isn't it crazy that your eyeballs are technically holes? Yeah. Nah. I mean, I fuck, I fuck with my eyeballs, so like I'm used to it. But I get to the uh, the American populace, that's crazy. Like your pupils are technically sphincters. I mean, I get why Nicole is like thinks that's crazy because you know she got fooled by a children's show mm -hmm. earlier today, so she is very gullible. I feel like I'm high right now. <laughs> I hope this this episode is either going to be the greatest for people or the worst. It's yeah, all in the edit. This is like a this is a Goose Nicole episode part two all over again. Part two. Part two. Uh, I love the fight scene in the cave. That was super well shot and lit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, yeah. while that's happening, it's them upstairs. The the Imperial Zone army. Two of these children are acting like someone is either having sex under the floorboards or in Edgar Allan Poe story where people are having sex underneath floorboards is happening. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, like, or your parents are fighting. Nah, just, I just put on headphones and drown it out. Yeah, yeah. Sound design wise, those were those were very interesting yelps under the floorboards. Like, I don't think I've ever heard a fight in this show. I haven't, you know, I haven't seen as many as you guys have, but I have not, I have not, I have not heard a fight from this uh, series. I don't want to straight call it sounding like sex, but it didn't totally sound like fighting. I don't, know? I mean, I don't think the fighting sounded like sex. How them upstairs to shield the, of like, oh, no, 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 kids, get away from there. Uh, let's play a song so we don't hear what's happening downstairs. I don't, they, I don't know, man. There was, there was more yelping than grunting. Than I expected. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. That's, dude, that's what the fox say. Are those sounds happening underneath the floorboard? While okay. he's coming mountain style, baby. Oh, you gotta listen to that KGP song, Under the Floorboards. I got a new catchphrase, and it is getting annoying very quickly. <laughs> Did you say I, coming <laughs> under, it's coming mountain style again? Cal, absolutely, I said coming mountain style. You just uh, edited it out for good taste. I uh, No, I just blanked it out in my head. That's also healthy. What kid cares about a teacher this much? Because this kid's running saying, where are you, Ken? Where are you? That's very, that's why I'm like, these kids probably don't have parents. Like the way they, like the way they're at school, it feels like the whole time. And like, they do, they also do, a, I think, a very good job of establishing how much these children love these fake teacher siblings. Like, I felt, I don't know, I felt very connected to their to this relationship. Like, let's see, I know they're fake, but the relationship is real. And that's why I'm like, oh, God, no. Maybe you yourself are in search of a teacher figure. What are you talking about? My, my dad's dead and I come mountain style every day. I'm good. Don't worry about it. Wow, just deflecting. Yeah, you need a teacher, no, Nicole. What are you talking about? I'm fine. Be his sensei. I don't need. I don't need nothing. Henry, <laughs> be his sensei. Nicole, did you just pawn me off to Henry? <laughs> yeah. The fuck, Nicole. I was hoping this you were sucks. you were gonna say, okay. Well, here it is, kiddo. Instead, she pawned me off to a fucking cat. Yeah. Right now, both the cats are on the couch, just lounging. I can't even see it. 
That's good. That's it's by design. You can't see it. It's shitty sensei ship. All my senseis just lay around on a couch. None of them are teaching me piano. None of them are using their magic fingers to snap me over a pommel horse and give me gymnast courage. None of them are doing nothing. One is laying on a couch just up in heaven. Well, okay. That's not a good sense. I already have one of those. My dad. Oh, no, that's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. My real sensei? Oh, I thought you were talking about the mountains. No. Oh, you talking about coming mountain style, baby? Is this catching on? <laughs> no. <laughs> taking over the world so a brand new fad uh, to be like be completely honest do you think mm -hmm. your dad is in heaven or do you think your dad is in Jeez. hell what the fuck <laughs> is that <laughs> question it's a real honest You're question a comedian you have to tell the truth <laughs> yeah you fucker <laughs> i gotta take you through this haunted house of my <laughs> mind mm -hmm. <laughs> Where i was like prepared too like there's it was the one time you were like i'm gonna ask a serious question I'm like you know what We've been having, I've been goofing around. I've been de derailing the podcast. I'm going to give James a serious answer and then fuck you. Oh my God. I think yeah. my mom will go to heaven. I'm <laughs> iffy yeah. on my dad. Good luck, I guess. You know? Yeah, I hear you. Because he, he's very for the individual, you know? Sure. And that's not Christianly. <laughs> I don't know. I I don't think it's ever, well, no, okay. It's absolutely established by Jesus the Nazarene that you should be charitable, <laughs> you fucking ass. By Jesus Whoa. von Christ <laughs> <laughs> himself. God, we should just end it there. <laughs> I hope so. I agreed with you and you called me an ass. Nicole refuses to take me on as a sensei. She's pawned me off to a fucking cat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's fucking right now. He's humping butter so hard. <laughs> oh, no. Mountain style. Mountain style, <laughs> baby. Hey, guys, they do some shit. And that's all. We don't need. Do we need to keep going through notes? They all have the five tector, that crustacean looking dude. It, the sea is calling his name. It's like me. The sea's always calling out to me uh, to either live by it, uh, just or so it, die by it. Yeah, just so it has some company. Oh, wouldn't I be so cool as like a, a dressed in white ghost longing for his lover by the sea? Sure. Yeah, I can see you pulling off like made of the mist style. Uh, imagine this. Oh no. <laughs> so uh, I'm like in a like. Imagine mist. <laughs> yeah. No. Okay, so <laughs> Zach Bagan goes to a lighthouse and the <laughs> kooky shit I would be saying in the EVP. <laughs> Yeah. They'd be like, this can't be real. No ghost would, th because I'm so disjointed if they use the ghost box. They're like, <laughs> they'd be like, well, this is just random shit being said. It sounds like it's in the same voice, but I don't think this is a ghost. Now, what I'm curious of, would you use that opportunity while you're a ghost to basically record another podcast oh no absolutely <laughs> okay cool yeah yeah yeah. great that's what i'm that's what i'm here for yeah that's what <laughs> I, that's actually what i'm getting at we were we found a ghost but he's i think he's just using us to record a podcast <laughs> yeah oh my god <laughs> this is we go out to maybe 40 people hey guys tell a friend about our show <laughs> but if best case scenario is me dying by a lighthouse after, you know, plunging to my death, self-inflicted, and I'm finally able to be like, hey, guys, today on Mostly Speaking Sentai, I'm going out to millions of people on the Travel Channel. And you don't even have to edit it. That's their job. Oh, thank Christ. Yeah. Von Christ. <laughs> guys, I'm... Now, what if JVC stood for Jesus Von Christ? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the name of the episode. That was good shit. I mean, you can't name it Coming Mountain Style. Hell so. yeah, you can. No. Spelling ball, baby. Come Mountain Style. <laughs> uh, the last thing that I have is <laughs> th the sibling teachers are finally actually teaching these mountain children, and mm -hmm. they're passing a baton, doing a relay and just seeing a child's little legs trying so hard to run is so funny. Just something about a child <laughs> running is funny to me because, like, kids have it rough. Parents don't understand as Will Smith smacked it into the youth years ago. 
teachers, their assholes always out to get you with homework and pop quizzes. And we're the- recording a you've been recording a series for months now centered around teachers. Sir, how dare you? And let's at least not forget goddamn government telling children they can't work. Okay, real quick. I also want to talk about Chevalier stays disguised as Ken for a little bit longer while the rest uh, uh, while the rest of uh, Mado's crew kind of distracts the five guys. Mm -hmm. And as Chevalier's Ken is running away, Yuda spots him and starts chasing him. Mm -hmm. I thought that was handled very beautifully. Like everything about him running up to him, finally catching him. Yuda throws his hands around someone he thinks is Ken. But regardless of who he thinks he is, has developed this very strong connection, this bond with. And the big thing in the intro too, kind of like where the where we get the title sc- screen of fake teacher siblings uh, is Yuta making quote unquote Ken promise that they'll never leave. Because mm-hmm. that's that one of the things about these rural children is that they do get teacher siblings, but they constantly are come and go. These are the first ones to really stick around. So this, you know, this climactic sequence, Yuta chases who he thinks is Ken, finally throws his arms around him and says, you promised you'd never leave. And Ken just, quote unquote, Ken just, I guess I have to keep my promise and drops the disguise. He is Chevalier and immediately kidnaps, like holds, <laughs> holds the kid hostage uh, in front of Fumia, the real Fumia. And I'm just like, fuck the shit. It's poor Yuta. This is traumatizing. Yeah, that child is scarred for life. I'm sorry, I wasn't laughing at what Sean was saying. I just kept thinking about Jesus von Christ. Oh my god. Oh my god. All right. Wrap it up. <laughs> but don't wrap it up while you go mountain style. Nah, baby. Mountain style raw. <laughs> Sean. I hate this. I hate this. <laughs> well, you can't mountain style because you're blasting on some bosoms gotta get that fresh powder baby yeah that shred the gnar bitch dusty bender style (laughs) dusty roads daddy sean thank you so much for being here of course anytime do you have anything to plug yeah, baby, fucking uh, twitch.tv goose vk is me me and james is sweaty time pro wrestling and a fucking party on Wayne. Nicole, Mountain you got style. <laughs> Nicole, you got anything to plug? First of all, fucking vote. True. Second of all, go to darlinghomebody.com, sign up to be the Darling Homebody Society member, and get a monthly sticker or a magnet as a gift. Fuck yeah. And follow me on the various social medias, uh, Darling Homebody. And um, I think that's it. I don't think it is, Nicole, because on December 1st, Thursday in the evening, specific time will be finalized shortly. We are doing another Darling Homebody shopping network stream, but this one is going to be big. Because last year, I did a solo one where every $100 we made, I did a Hot Ones last dab, chomped it in my mouth and went, oh, this is real hot. Well, we are going, we we got like $600 in one night. We are going to try and get $1,000. 20% off everything, correct? Everything except for shirts. Okay, because of uh, technicalities. That's fine. So, guys. 20% off everything. We need to get $1,000 so I can tell Nicole, hey, uh, Christmas might be a little light from me this year, but hey, at least I got you that $1,000. I'm going to be promoting it on as many podcasts as I can, guesting and whatnot, getting sponsorships. So if you have a podcast you need edited and I can put a commercial on it, I will edit it for you because we need all ears and eyes and so much cashish finalized in this night it's gonna be good but every a hundred dollars i will be doing a last dab spicy and i the first hundred oh that's one dab second oh that's two and so on and so forth crescendoing in if we get to the thousand i will be doing the one chip challenge that really spicy hot chip hot nom, 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 nom. I, uh, hey you want to know what i'll even put a last dab on it if we get to a thousand yeah 
hey, James, uh, you know, I have a podcast and I'm pretty sure my editor is editing it to make me look stupid. Absolutely not. I make you look very <laughs> nice. I don't know. I listen back. I look. I sound like an asshole. Okay, well, there's a lot of times when you're stuttering. You say lots of ums. You are speaking over me. I cut that stuff out. Then why do I still sound like an asshole? Okay, well, that might be your just general demeanor. Okay. So, guys, <laughs> Darling Homebody Shopping Network, December 1st. It will be on the Darling Homebody Twitch and the Facebook. It's going to be a nice time. We'll have things planned. We'll treat you right. I'll probably remove my shirt if you ask me and you buy a bunch of stuff like I've done multiple times already. We'll smash. If you buy some of the product, we'll smash it on on stream if you want us to. Whether or not you want us to. <laughs> no, no, no. If, if you want us to. Whatever you want, we will do because we need your cash. $1,000. Ooh, baby. But hey, head over to MLMPod.com where we have two new podcasts, Formulaic with R2 Shelby 2 and The Height of Horror with Presley Bracken. It's going to be a good time, bitch. And head over to uh, wherever music is found tonight. The uh, soundtrack to Special Delivery. Melzer was on last week promoting it. That's available everywhere Friday, November 4th. Oh, yeah. And finally, Patreon.com forward slash MLM pod, where for $5 a month, you get exclusive content every single Friday. But if you uh, pledge $10 as a Franklin's follower, hey, RIP and happy birthday yesterday, my good cat friend, you get monthly exclusive content like straight to Patreon. Sean was on one. Sean was on yeah. two. Yeah, both were very fun. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And you get shout-outs on every single free feed podcast, so let's begin with those, starting with Steve F., Eric Berry of Ranger Command Power Hour, Alex Z, The Waz. I know if I was going to pause a little, this asshole would keep saying, Mountain Style. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> Orion, he's a rapper, Defo, D-hyphen-F-O, Kayla, A.K. Two Grapes, Jordan B, the Chaos Witch, my Bickle, my brother in common law, Joshua, Jake, Steve Barnes, co- or actually he's the host, I'm the co-host of Sweet Child of Time, the womb in which I emerged, my mother, and finally, Lil' Corey's BFF and roommate, Shane. I've been James. I'm Nicole. I am Sean. And we've been Mostly, Mostly Speaking Sentai. Sentai. Bye bye. Mountain style, baby. Oh, yeah, baby. Jesus von Christ. <laughs> now, quick post credits. Uh, oh. And I'm so sorry, just like, but it's a really important question. James, when you think of Franklin, do you think he went to heaven or hell? And sub question, how did this question make you feel, you piece of shit? <laughs> Oh my God. My boy's just like Deserve. me, 100% Satanist, not that Levian bullshit. He worships the four rulers of hell Leviathan, Belal, Beelzebub, and Lucifer. So get Ben. Hell yeah. My axe is my homie. My axe is my homie. <laughs> everybody, everybody, everybody run. He's like goddamn uh, Lil Nicky. Little Nicholas? Yes. Uh, Sean said little Nicole ass. On, and I said, oh, I love a little Nicole ass too. And then Sean Whoa, got uncomfortable. You love Nicole? That's yeah. crazy. Mm -hmm. wow. See you guys. Bye. <laughs> this has been a Marshland Media production produced by James McCullum. For more content, please visit mlmpod.com. To support our network and have access to exclusive podcasts, head over to patreon.com forward slash MLM pod and sign up today. Speaking of stereotypes, JVC. Jean-Claude Van Cad? No, then Nicole, you say, I'm Nicole. What? <laughs> That's what we have been doing for five minutes. I don't say my name. <laughs> you did at first and then you stopped doing that and then you started saying I'm James. Fine, okay, okay. James, let me do the intro. I was killing it. All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs>